Hi, Makers. Mel here. Today, I am here with Talisha Brown from Boss Vision. She is an amazing entrepreneur. She has an awesome story. Um, she is a candle maker and um, all of the things. So go check Talisha out at Boss Vision. And we are going to be doing a two-part collaboration for this series. Today, Talisha is going to be sharing with us a little bit about what it looks like for her to go side hustle part-time to full-time entrepreneur. What that transition looks like, maybe some of the struggles that she's overcome. We're super excited to have you today, Talisha. Tell us your story. I am Talisha from Boss Vision, and it has been a long journey, honestly. I started making candles in 2020 after, to be transparent, I was uh, laid off from a job due to COVID in 2020, and it lit this fire in me of creative creativity. So I just wanted to figure out a way to combat, you know, the boredom of at home. And I found out that candle making exists. I didn't even know this was possible until I, I was obsessed with going to larger retailers and getting their candles. And I was like, why not figure out a way to make sense at home? And so once I found out how to make them, I kind of got obsessed with the, you know, concept of showing people what I learned because it was so challenging to actually get the, the candles to smell good in general. So when you finally figure it out, it's like, you want to share with the world. It's like, everybody must know what happened here because <laughs> I'm at home. Mm -hmm. I'm at home. Everybody's virtual. So that's really where I started with um, Boss Vision. I thought it would be good to show people how to, the mission was to boss up, elevate your own mm -hmm. reality change the narrative, especially after being laid off. So then I got a new job in tech sales in 2020. So I was doing mm -hmm. the candle making part time at that time. And what I found was I was obsessed with my business. Every day I would work from nine to five uh, on my software sales job. And then from five to nine in my candle studio, my candle studio was my kitchen at the point. But then mm -hmm. I moved into this huge, huge home. It's like a three story mm -hmm. home. And I candle studio at this point. So I'm able to just go down there. And what that taught me was that it's possible to actually own your own business and find success with it if you spend time every day. And it's going to gonna suck for a while. Like in the beginning, you're going to be <laughs> struggling with your recipes, your ideas, your confidence. But you have to realize that you are in control of your own actions you're not really in control of what's going to happen to you and mm -hmm. every small effort is creating this larger goal i mean it's similar to i saw this quote about i don't know if he's like shining an axe and it, it took much less time to actually cut the tree down than it did to actually get the axe sharpened and it just mm -hmm. resonated with me for so long because it just helps you understand that you have to prepare more than um, you actually have to execute. So make sure you take that time to prep now. I know a lot of makers are a bit apprehensive about, you know, just getting out there, but it's really important to just be confident in your own process and take that risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome, Talisha. That's that's so so important. I think for people to figure out or to to realize too that it's so empowering to know that you are in control to some degree. You know, like where you maybe can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond to it. Mm -hmm. And your response to it was awesome. Like now you're your own boss. You have your own business. Like that might have not happened if you didn't get laid off. Yeah, and I went back into mm -hmm. the you know I guess the tech world for about two years. And what really made me make the jump to actually quit this time was finding out that you can actually make a revenue from owning a business. And what I was looking at, I kept looking at my numbers. I was like, okay, I think I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine if I could just take the time out. And I think that that's the main part of it that I wanted to share with others is that you can you can leverage your own skill set to actually make your own business lucrative because initially you'll think oh my gosh there's no way to make money besides making a paycheck but you can actually make money through your own passion so mm -hmm. yeah, it's been yeah. Really cool that's awesome well in terms of like the switch like in terms of revenue specifically, like, did you start out being at a place where you were financially stable enough or was it kind of something you had to work up towards? Like, how did that feel? Like, what did that look like? How did you scale up to a place where you didn't need any other side hustle or anything? 
Amazing question. Yeah. So I launched December 2020 and it was crickets, like nothing. I felt mm -hmm. so bad. I was like, why am I not getting any sales? Like I would get one sale a week in December and then January hit. I wasn't getting any sales. And then I was like, wait, OK, I have this background in software sales. I need to flip this flip the script and actually take control of my marketing efforts, take control of my networking. And just from there, it was around February where I decided to start reaching out to people and, you know, letting them know about my business. And I took away that, you know, apprehension of, oh, I'm scared of what people think. And I kind of replaced it with, I don't care right now. I don't have that. I, you have to know about these scandals. Like I don't, I eliminated the doubt because it was totally down. So I was like, let's speed this up. And I decided to reach out to other candle makers. I started to reach out to influencers to share my products. But mostly I just, I decided to create content on TikTok that, that really helped me with getting sales. I mean, if you can make someone laugh, they'll buy a candle. So that helps. <laughs> and I just remember, I noticed I was getting a few sales each week and they started to increase and I noticed I was running out of fragrance oil. So I was like, okay, this is working. I need to figure out a way to keep going. So the expansion happened with putting myself on Etsy. I put myself on fair. I put myself out there as much as I possibly could and just making sure I was really present on Instagram as well. Instagram is a really great opportunity to create more sales or create more of um, customers that feel comfortable with your process because when they're scrolling, mm -hmm. Instagram reels, they don't know who you are at all, but you get the opportunity to introduce yourself because reels and um, TikToks, they're pushed out to everyone. So it's basically free marketing. So at one point I found myself making more than what I was making at my nine to five. So I was like, okay, wow. so this, should, this should be all day. And because it was so annoying to wake up super early for a job and then go to bed super late because I was working on what was actually fun. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I take the day to just do candle making, I won't hate, you know, hate life as much. <laughs> I decided to do it. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> crazy mm -hmm. it's to actually send that two week notice. It was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And when I did it, it was like, oh, I'll wait. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I actually vlogged the experience. I was like, I quit, guys. <laughs> That's an amazing story. Well, those of you watching, definitely go check out uh, Talisha's uh, video about that. We're <laughs> talking about her quitting story. Um, it sounds really inspirational, too. Yeah, it was a crazy experience. Honestly, it's an adrenaline rush. But prior to doing it, I made sure everything was prepared. I had enough save for you know six months out. That's the standard for me like if you have six months mm -hmm. saved you can make that jump but beyond that if you aren't really interested in doing um kind of making full time always make sure that you find find your groove and your routine throughout the day mm -hmm. so that you're not just making candles without any um you know i guess re reward after <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and coming back to the routine too, Talisha, what does your day-to-day -day look like? Like, did you find struggle um, when you first went from that structure of the job to transitioning and being your own boss? How was that? Huge culture shock. I was like, wait, what? I'm not logging in and having a Zoom call because I am I was working from home. So I would log in at 9 a.m. and have Zoom calls and that helped structure my day. And then the, to be honest, like the annoyance of the meetings motivated me to like work harder on my candles so now it's like i'm stress-free what is this i don't have to motivate me and you have to create motivation like i started watching mel robbins podcast i don't know if you've heard of her but she has this five mm -hmm. four, you heard of her yeah yeah she has that five four three two one method where you just mm -hmm. make yourself do something it's like a science fact routine and so mm -hmm. it took me three months of just waking up late and um like sleeping in just taking my time my routine was way off at that point i was not motivated it took me a, a lot of time to actually get into you know holding myself accountable and creating things to look forward to because you can go you know stir crazy in the house all day but you have to get out of the house take product photos outside <laughs> and then <laughs> routine has changed from like you know just sleeping in until like 11 a.m. That was late, super late to me to getting up at five. Now I get up at five. I go to the gym. I make sure I have a routine of just 
you know, like a hygiene routine and then the fitness routine and then jumping into the piano studio for a block of time. I know I'm not leaving there until I think it's like I try to do 11 to 1. Don't get out. And then you can leave and stretch your legs, go out into the sun, because if you work from home, you should not stay in the house the entire day. It's toxic. You have to go into the sunlight. <laughs> it helps balance out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you will go crazy. And then staring at a screen is just crazy. So just try mm -hmm. not to stare at a screen all day. Try to take time for yourself. I'm getting into podcasts instead of just scrolling through Instagram. So that's been helping. And I think that the main transition challenge was a schedule, but if you hold yourself accountable, smaller habits, those bigger habits eventually come. Amazing. Well, Talisha, that is awesome advice. I am definitely inspired. I feel more confident now. <laughs> if I wanted to launch a business, I definitely feel like I have a better understanding of where I would go and how I would do it. And that is just super valuable. Um, thank you so much for sharing your tips about that. Um, do you have any final advice that you want to give uh, the makers here about your journey or about getting started? Yeah, I would definitely say be present in every moment and don't take any of your no's as um, the reason for you not to keep going. If anything, take them as opportunities to learn what it takes for you to get the intended results. So I've I've learned that being persistent in your process will help you way more than looking at it from eyes of you're not good enough. If you look at it as, no, why not me? Then you're able to get there much faster. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, thank you, Talisha. To wrap up this video, everyone watching, you can go ahead and follow Talisha Brown at uh, Boss Vision. I'll also throw the link underneath this video, and it'll also be linked in a, a little uh, pop-up here on the screen, too. So make sure that you go follow her. We are going to be doing a part two session on her account uh, where we're going to talk about the importance of burn testing. So you don't want to miss that. Make sure that you um, keep an eye out, turn your notifications on, because we will be letting you know when that's going to come out and when they're gonna be released on both channels. And um, as we like to say here at Makesy, uh, thank you for watching and go make it happen. <laughs> thank you, Talisha. No problem, thank you.